when I first came, I had 50% for mathematics on my report card. <laughs> and I think I had 49% for physical sciences. Sure. So eventually, when I finished in grade 12, I had 89% um, for mathematics okay. and 84% um, for physical sciences. Oh. Dr. Atlangelani Songwani, Kutwanung ProMed alumnus of the class of 2012, a doctor at Leratung Hospital. This morning, I'm with Dr. Tlangelani Tlangwani, our ProMed alumni from Dobsonville Center. Tlangelani was with the program from 2010 until 2012. Good morning, Dr. Tlangelani. My name is Tavitella. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? Well, thanks. How are you? I'm fine. Your journey uh, with ProMed, you know, since 2010. Can you just tell us about your journey? My journey began in 2010. Um, I, I was starting grade 10 then in the ProMed Center at uh, Dobsonville. So I remember when I began, when I went to the ProMed Center, um, one of my first teachers was Mr. Nkomo, and one thing that they emphasized to us is that whether you like it or not, when you get here, you're going to pass. Okay. And yeah, that crossed me some off, but I was like, anyway, let's see what happens. And the issue at that time I remember was that I didn't believe that much because my marks were not that great. Because I remember throughout that year in the center, uh, the highest mark I think I ever got I couldn't even get 70, I got 69%. What were your marks when you first came into the program? When I first came, I had 50% for mathematics on my report card. <laughs> and I think I had 49% for physical sciences. Sure. Okay, okay. Yes. And, but do you remember how you finished in grade 12? I do remember how I finished in grade 12. Your math? So eventually, when I finished in grade 12, I had 89% um, for mathematics okay. and 84% um, for physical sciences. Oh, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. Yes. And then after metric, what happened? So after metric, what happens is that I applied to study um, civil engineering at UCT. Okay. So I was accepted by UCT um, and they also gave me a place to stay. But prior to this, what happened is that I had a conversation with the coach and he said he sees it fit that I do not do civil engineering as I would not fit well in the field. Okay. And as someone who taught me and mentored me for a long time, I took his word and said I'd rather do medicine, but I had not applied. Okay. So then I settled for a BSc in Biological Sciences in, at Vets University. Okay. Um, then while I was studying, then that's when I got the opportunity in terms of a scholarship to go study medicine okay. um, in Cuba. Oh, you went to Cuba? Yes. Oh, okay. And how long was it? So in Cuba we stayed for I left in 2013, came back in 2019, six years. Oh, you got the six years study? Six years. Six years. Yeah. Okay. And how do you think ProMeds contributed to your success in becoming a medical doctor? So, firstly, uh, the discipline that was instilled, okay. um, like, into me when I was in the center. And secondly, the other point which has consistently emphasized that you need to have a vision. You need to know where you are going in your life and you need to be determined and they taught us ways to excel not only in our studies but also looking at our lives not focusing on one thing and leaving the other so they actually helped shape me as an individual in terms of my principles my values uh, my beliefs and um, going for what I've proposed in my heart in this life and you are a part of the cohort that was going to the center Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Public exactly. holidays and school holidays. Yes, Can you say, tell us about that? So, okay, initially, um, you know, when this whole idea of going to school came across uh, on weekends, <laughs> that is to say, <laughs> I didn't like it. But then I was like, okay, let me try it out and see what happens. Okay. So initially, it was Saturday, that was fine. And then some Sundays when we were writing, so that was grade 10. And that was not too much of a challenge. But then I realized something. I don't have grade 10, I started enjoying this program. Okay. So when grade 11 came, I didn't have an issue. I knew that my weekends were now fully dedicated okay. to school. So I made the necessary sacrifices. Okay. So grade 11, it became uh, Friday and Saturday. And then <coughs> some Sundays. But when it came to metric, Friday, Saturday, 
uh, Sunday, and then we also had public holidays, school holidays. So essentially, I never had a holiday until I finished with my school in December. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, but obviously, when you finished, you never regretted, you know, those moments of going to school uh, every weekend. I, I never regretted whatsoever. Instead, I made me miss the park camp even more because that's how dear it grew <laughs> okay. to me. Okay. And then when you were in Cuba, you know, how's, how's education in Cuba compared to South Africa? So, um, education in Cuba, so to begin with, the first year in Cuba is dedicated to language. Oh, okay. The Spanish speaking country. Okay. So you have to learn Spanish. If you don't pass Spanish, then you can't do what you say. Okay. So for the first three months, you do nothing but Spanish. Okay. And then once you pass it, then they add the other subjects that you normally do in our first day of uh, medicine to okay. side. Okay. Yes. So the system, I found it a bit strange in the beginning because I'm used to marks and percentages and so forth. Yeah. But they have, um, it's like it's a level system if I to describe it, okay. whereby they group your marks in certain uh, percentages. Okay. So it's like, for example, if the highest being level five, so if you get like between 90 and 100, then you are obviously like excellent student or level five. Okay. And then if you get um, 80 to 89, then you're looking at level four. Okay. And then if you get 70 to 79, that's our level three. It's so meaning that you're an average student actually, okay. because then the pass mark is 70. Anything below that, now you are having the category of a two, which is a fail. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, but you actually do, you study MPHC, uh, MBCHB in South Africa. So, yes, we did, although the education system is um, structured differently. So, in terms of medicine, we had the first two years focused on human anatomy, biochemistry, and the other subjects like pharmacology, psychology, and so forth. Um, and then within that time, we do have some visits to the clinic, but when it gets to the third year, you now it becomes fully in the clinical space. Oh, you are responsible okay. for a patient, although you are still studying. Okay. So your priority number one becomes in the morning when you get there, you need to go see your patient unless you have a dedicated lecture schedule for that time. Okay. But in normal works, you go see your patient, you make sure everything of them is sorted out. Excellent. So that when the consultant round comes, okay. you can present your patient and um, you tell them what needs to be done for the patient for the okay. day and that's part of my evaluation okay. and then we'd have lectures and laughter essentially. Okay and then currently you are uh, when you came back you went to uh, Chris Honey uh, uh, hospital. Yes so um, when I came back I we have to do 18 months uh, because of this language differences and the system differences. So I did 18 months at the uh, Bates University. Okay. And then shortly thereafter, I started with my internship at the uh, Kersani Parakona Hospital. Oh, you first went to university to do your 18 months? 18 months, yes. After 18 months, then you went to Kersani Hospital. Yes, but then provided that you do pass your exams, of course, because you have okay. exams at the end. Okay. So exams from Bates and also the um, um, so if I translated it, they call it a standard, but it's like a state exam in Cuba. So it's like a standardized that all doctors write at the time. Okay. Yes. And then currently you are at? So I was working at Leratom uh, Hospital this year. Okay. But now I'm going to move to, uh, to the district. And what are your plans in you know, going forward? My plans going forward with the um, vision and principles that Ukraine is instilled in me. Um, I want to actually further my studies, um, get to specialize okay. in my current profession in a particular discipline. And then from there I'll see how they escalate and okay. maybe eventually become a professor or not. Okay. And then in terms of your message to the learners you know, at your center regarding medicine, what is your message? So if I were to be honest, if you are really determined, you know what you want. Medicine is not difficult. Okay. It is actually not what they make it out to be. So if you are disciplined, you know what you want, and you're willing to make the necessary sacrifices, you can make it. Okay. And also, when you're, in a, when you're having a challenge, just knowing uh, how to reach out and saying, I need help in this particular situation, because in this life, you won't know everything. Okay. We're all product of meeting with other people. I'd like to extend my deepest gratitude to the university because I understand that if they did not 
uh, sponsor this project. And if they did not make this available, I probably would not be sitting here right now. I would not maybe even be a doctor. Because looking at childhood circumstances, my life could have just ended in a vacation. Dr. Kamwane, thank you very much for your time. And I wish you all the best, you know, with your endeavors in becoming an academic doctor. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mbitela. So much. Center for Math, Science and Technology. Economic growth solution we need.